All right, so it's time to set up a new pressure pot for the shop. I'm super excited about this one. I've been waiting for years for a two and a half gallon pot like this to come out that is specifically made for resin casting. And so this is the two and a half gallon California Air Tools resin casting pressure pot. It is a beast, it's awesome, and it's gonna be the one that I recommend to 85% of people who need a pressure pot for their resin casting, unless you need something bigger, basically. This is the one to go for, I think. So I'm excited. In this video, we're gonna unbox it. I'll kind of show you what, you know, how does it come? Uh, what does it entail getting it out of the box and all that stuff? And then we're just gonna go through, you know, getting it ready to cast in. And the beauty of this pressure pot is, it is zero setup for the most part. There's one thing that we need to do. So. That's it, and then it'll be ready to cast. So I can't wait. Let's get on that unboxing, and then I'll kind of show you, give you a little tour of the features, tell you what's going on with this pot, and then we'll cast something in it. So let's get started. So like I said, this thing comes fully assembled in the box. There is absolutely no assembly required. No plumbing, no tinkering, no nothing. The one thing that you will need to do before you wanna start casting in it is just set the regulator. That takes two seconds and I'll walk you through how you do that. It's, it's super simple. Um, but the packaging is really great. There's good styrofoam. Everything was you know, nice and safe. There's nothing you know, damaged or anything like that. I think it's pretty bulletproof packaging. Um, and looking at the pressure pot itself, it is a really nice high quality pressure pot. This thing rivals the quality of the CA Technologies pots that I've been using in the past. Um, but overall, very happy with this thing. All right, so before I do the, the setup on this, I just wanna point out this is the regulator right here for anybody that doesn't know what it does. It basically limits the PSI. So when you connect your, your air hose to this and it starts pressurizing the tank, this regulator, you can adjust it and set it to a certain PSI level that it will basically stop pressurizing at. So for this pressure pot, the max PSI is 80. I would, you'd never wanna go over 80, but though it says the working pressure is 60. That's what I would recommend setting this at. There's really no advantage to go over 60 for resin casting, you know, 70, 75, 65. None of those, you know, none of those numbers are really gonna be advantageous in any way. So I would just set it at 60. Um, but basically what you can do is this knob can go in and out. And so it, to adjust it, you pull it out and then you can twist it left and right, all right? Now the further left you go, that's lowering the PSI. So when, again, when you connect the hose to this, if you crank this open, it's gonna stop pressurizing. So it's gonna stop letting air in basically at a lower PSI. The further right you turn this, so righty tighty, the higher the PSI goes. So the game plan on how you do this is you're gonna crank this pretty far open. It's gonna stop pressurizing pretty low. And then you just slowly turn it to the right and watch your gauge. And once it hits 60, you're done. You, you, you can push this thing in and your regulator's set. I'd always double check it just to make sure, you know, empty it and then, and then redo it. And if you need to make an adjustment, do that. But um, that's as easy as it is. It's just a little bit of an adjustment, set it and you're done. All right, so I've got everything clamped down. You wanna make sure that your, your lid is fully tightened down before you start doing this because we're gonna pressurize it. I've closed my ball valve and we're gonna hook up our air hose. Now, I have the compressor air uh, regulator set at like, I think we have it set at like 120 or something like that because we use other tools in the shop that require a higher PSI. And we don't wanna have to change the compressor every single time we you know, are using a different tool. So it, for us, definitely, it makes more sense to set the regulator on the compressor as far, like to the highest tool basically, and then regulate down on each tool so that each tool is getting the proper you know, PSI level. 
So we got everything ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is, again, we want to pull this out and I'm going to loosen this. So I'm going lefty if I was looking at it. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit and then I'm going to slowly start pressurizing. I'm watching my gauge. I'm going to loosen this a little bit further. Okay, so you can also play with it while it's, you can move this while it's, uh, you know, while you're pressurizing. So I've, I've lowered it down. It's stopped now at about 50. So what I'm going to do now to sneak up to 60 to set this is I'm going to start increasing the pressure. And while I do that, the gauge is going to allow, or, or the regulator is going to allow more, you know, air to come in. So I'm just going to kind of keep sneaking up. And that's just about at 60. You don't have to be dead on perfect, you know, it, it just in the, in the neighborhood of 60. All right, I'm actually, I'm going to go just a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, so that's set. And close this off, disconnect, and it's going to hold pressure now. Now, what I would recommend, I'm not going to do this right now. You guys can get the idea, but I'm going to crack this let it fully empty and then redo this just to make sure that that's set right. And if you need to make any adjustments, it's the same thing. So it's as simple as that. That is the only thing that you need to do before you get started. Like it's, like I said, it takes like two seconds. Other than that, this thing is ready to go out of the box. You can start casting immediately. All right, so let's talk some specifications and what I like about this pot. It's got some features that I really like that actually the CA Technologies pots don't have. So it's got some advantages there. Um, and it's definitely better than the Harbor Freight. Now, if you have like the lowest budget possible, like you, you really can't spend mon enough money to buy one of these, then the Harbor Freight is a good option to get into it and, and it'll work. But it's got a lot of drawbacks. The, the screws are really not very nice. The threads don't twist very well and, and the, the wing nuts are so small that they hurt. You really need to like create something to actually tighten the, the lid on that. Plus the, the clamping system, it actually dents the lid and I just really don't like that system. So this has the flat um, you know, bearing surface with the washers, just like the CA Technologies pot. You're not gonna damage anything by tightening your lid. Love that. The wing nuts are large so you can get your hand on it. They're not, they don't hurt <laughs> to turn. Um, so, you know, all of that stuff. It's got the feet uh, or like the foot brackets and it has some really awesome feet that make it easy to, uh, like these feet on this thing are good enough that I think on most surfaces that you put this pot on, it's not going to spin when you try and, when you're clamping everything down. I really like that. It, it really holds in place. Now I got a silicone mat. That could be an option if you have something that's a little bit of a slipper, slippery surface that you have it on. Um, you know, you could put something a little bit like, like a silicone mat underneath it and it's, it's, I mean, it's not really going anywhere. So it eliminates the need to mount the, the pot to, to a surface, which you really need to mount the CA Technologies pots. And frankly, the, the Harbor Freight pots don't even have a mounting system uh, built into them. So you gotta get creative and it's spinning around when you're trying to clamp it. So this thing's got a lot of great features. Um, the other thing is if you did wanna mount it in place, you know, keep it rock solid, um, it has the brackets and it actually has an advantage over the CA Technologies pots. The brackets on the CA Technologies pots that I, I have been using, they actually don't go below the pot itself. So you have to shim it up and it's kind of weird. Um, these things will, it looks like, yeah, they go below the actual bottom of the pot. So it'll just mount directly on the surface, which is a little bit easier. So in looking at this thing, the fit and finish on this is great. I mean, there are no areas where I'm like, oh wow, they really kind of skimped there. It looks fabulous. I mean, everything's, you know, super high quality looking. Now, um, a couple things about specifications here. Let's open this up. So I wanted to mention, there are a couple of differences. This is the same diameter, uh, pretty, pretty close as the Harbor Freight pot. So I got a, a, a ruler here. It's about just, just under, it's about nine and a quarter, maybe nine and three eighths. Um, that's a little bit smaller than the CA Technologies pots. So it's about an inch um, smaller diameter. So these come in at about 10 and a quarter to 10 and three eighths. However, you have more depth. Um, this thing goes about nine and three quarters, nine and a half or something like that. Whereas you have about an inch lower 
um, depth in the CA Technologies pots. So it's got some advantages depending on what's going on. Now, I do kind of like the, the wider dimensions of the CA Technologies pots. However, it's, you can still get your hands, if you were doing like a pen blank brick like this, you can get your hands in there, there's no problem. Um, but, you know, it does make it easy on, the, on the, the slightly smaller diameter pots to just use some sort of a, you know, cradle system. Um, and you can pick these guys up. I'm pretty sure Turner's Warehouse has these. They're a P-Town Subby product. Um, and you can have shelves, and so it makes it real easy loading up. Um, one other thing that you probably will want to do is put something flat in the bottom of this. It's got a slight dish to it. Um, the CA Technologies pots are slightly more flat. They're not dead flat, but um, this is a little bit dished out. Not really a big deal. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem just dropping this thing in and it's gonna sit pretty flat. But if you're doing you know, silicone molds and different stuff, you'll wanna put something flat down in the bottom there so that it's nice and, and you got a flat surface to put your, your mold on. Um, so it's not curved underneath the mold, especially with silicone molds. If you pressurize a silicone mold on a, a curved surface, you're gonna get kind of curved blanks. So flat little disc of some sort. Turner's Warehouse carries these as well. But overall, I'm, I'm just really happy with this thing. I, I've been really honestly waiting for this pressure pot to come out. You know, the, the CA Technology or, or California Air Tools has had the five gallon resin casting ready to go out of the box. And actually that is the big feature with this. This thing is ready to go, obviously I showed you, out of the box, whereas not even a CA Technologies, you're paying over like $450, I think is what the CA Technologies pots go for now. I couldn't recommend that to most people that are resin casting unless you really needed the 10 inch wide diameter or something else like that with the CA Technologies pots. Um, why would you spend that much money? And then you, you still have to assemble the thing and do some plumbing. And then the Harbor Freight one, there's a whole conversion that has to happen. This thing, you pull it out and it's ready to go. I love it. It's, it's amazing. I'm glad they finally came out with the two and a half gallon version. Um, the five gallon I find is clunky. I mean, if, if all you're doing is pen blanks and stoppers and things like that, small things like maybe even sphere, sphere blanks, um, all you need is two and a half gallons and you're, you're saving money. The five gallon, the lid is heavy. It takes twice as long to fill up with air and all that kind of stuff. And frankly, I don't like using five gallon pressure pots. I have the CA Technologies one and I only use it if I actually have to. Now, before we move on to the casting part, I also wanna thank Turner's Warehouse for sending this to me. They sent it to me free of charge. I, I asked Chad if, I could, if they would send me one for free. Um, and I don't need a pressure pot, that's the thing. Uh, this was why I asked for a free one. I just couldn't justify spending money on this when I don't need it at all. However, I really wanted one so that I could get my hands on it, look at it, and also use it uh, because I knew that this was going to be the pot that I would recommend to people. I've been recommending the five gallon California Air Tools pots because they come you know, ready, ready to go out of the box, but I've never used one. I don't think I've even seen one of those ones before uh, in, you know, up, up close in person. So uh, big thank you to Turner's Warehouse for sending this to me. And they do have these things in stock right now. My affiliate link is down below. If you click on that, you're also actually helping the channel because Chad gives me a bonus when I refer people. And it costs you guys nothing. You just click that link and it just tells Turner's Warehouse you came from me. So uh, again, big thank you to you guys for using that link if you want to pick one of these guys up and to Turner's Warehouse for sending this to me to use and have and share with you guys as well. So uh, if you have any questions, like I said, uh, leave those down below and I'll try and answer all those things. Uh, but I think it's about time that we gave this thing a little break in resin casting. So let's get on that. All right, let's test this puppy out. So what I got here, we're going to be making some handle blanks with Choya in them. I got some red metallic flake. We got some silver and we have some metallic black. So I'm just waiting for the right temperature and we will get, pop our Choya in and we will cast these guys and test out this pressure pot. All right, here we go.
Nice. All right, so everything went smoothly. This pot works really well in use. Uh, no different than any of the other pots that I have sitting behind me that cost twice as much. That is really awesome. And you can't say that, you know, with the CA Technologies pots, you can't pull them out of the box and just plug them in and go. Uh, one thing that blows my mind with this pot, it's holding pressure. I, I didn't do any tests or anything checking to see, you know, if there was any air leaks and it's holding great. And I can't even say that about any pot that I've ever set up, any, any of them. I've always had to find, you know, some slight leak because you're doing a bunch of plumbing and conversions to them. And, you know, there's always something leaking. This thing is holding fast. So pretty awesome. Now, if you do have a pressure pot that has a leak or you're setting one up and you want to just double check, I have a video and I'll link to that down in the description and end up on the screen here. Um, if you need to find and fix leaks, I got a, a great video that shows you how to do all that. But if you're in the market for a pressure pot for resin casting, I think this is the way to go. I mean, there's you couldn't spend more money and get something that works out of the box, you know, so that alone makes it great. Now, the only other reason that I would say maybe look at something else is if you need a larger capacity, then I would go with the California Air Tools five gallon pot. Um, this is the two and a half. So. I don't know, pretty awesome, pretty awesome little pot. I can't wait to get these blanks out. These are gonna go to the mystery box subscribers. Uh, so we're just adding a few more of them. So I can't wait to pull these things out. Check on my social media if you wanna see the results of these, th this casting, what we get pulled out of the pot. So anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it helps you, uh, you know, think about what's going on with this pot and, and know you know, what to expect if you do pick one up. And if you do want to get one, again, I got links down in the description below to Turner's Warehouse where they have these guys in stock for you guys. So um, pretty awesome. Uh, if you have any questions about this pot, leave them down in the questions below. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all the beginner questions like, you know, what resin should I use? How does it all work? You know, what tools and supplies do I need to get started? It'll get you over that initial learning curve so you can get in the shop and start making some resin cast projects of your own. It's available on my website if you're interested. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.